do 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 to subscribe. Hey guys, what's up? This is Susie Spector, and you are watching this week's edition of Ask Spector. All you have to do is ask. All right, guys, I'm so excited about this week. Uh, first of all, I just want a disclaimer right now. I literally have four dogs in this room. <laughs> I'm watching my parents' dogs, and uh, we've got a schnoodle and a mini poodle uh, joining our pack right now. So uh, if you hear random weird whining uh, or some kind of licking of some kind, it's probably Bailey or Macy. Are you Bailey or Macy? That's right. I'm talking about you. Anyway. I would like to start out with letting you know that this edition of Spectre Vision is brought to you by Black Box Subscriptions. Black Box Subscriptions brings you a monthly hand curated collection of darkly themed goodies, accessories, stickers, jewelry, home decor, and more. It's all featured at blackboxsubscriptions.com. You guys really need to check it out. It's a great monthly subscription and I love it. And someday I'll do an unboxing video. <laughs> anyway, wow. I just want to start out this episode with saying thank you guys. Thank you so freaking much for supporting me over the years. Thank you so much for giving me your questions and, you know, liking the crud that I do on Facebook. I really, really appreciate it. It's meant more to me than you'll ever freaking no. You will never understand, I think, uh, how much it means to me. So thank you so very much. Thank all of you. I love you so much. In a world where uh, there's so much hate and there's so much judgment and there's so much evil and atrocity, I try really, really hard to take the good and positive things that you all have put out there in the world and pay it forward, I guess. Um, hopefully I'm doing it justice. I don't know. But anyway, we have got a ton of questions this week, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Questions. I wrote all of them down, like on a notepad, and then there were more. So yeah. Oakley doakley. We're going to start this episode off with Ben. Ben asks, what would 10-year-old Susie Spector think of current you? Honestly, I thought about this like as soon as you posted it, I was like, holy crap, what would 10 year old Susie Spector think of me? I think she would think I was amazing. And not amazing like in a narcissistic way, but super cool because I went to a private school on a scholarship. I was super blessed uh, to be able to do that. I was a kid growing up in the ghetto and I got to have a private education. But one of the things I got in trouble for a lot when I was a kid, even at my own library, was being young and liking things like books about like um, Wicca and paganism and things having to do with werewolves and vampires. And I thought, oh my god, this is super cool and I love it. Even at a super young age, the people that were um, watching me uh, grow as a child were like, asking my mom and dad, they're like, I think your kid are oh, crazy. And my parents were like, eh, I don't think she's crazy. I think she's just a little bit like older than her peers. And I'm really excited that um, I can look back on that and think, well, at least, you know, in that aspect, my parents were like, listen, because she wants to read a book about the crazy ghosts of the world does not mean that my kid is crazy. So fuck you. Um, but yeah. I really think that if I was 10 years old and I could see my future self, I would probably be excited and proud, at least at this very moment. I'm sure that I have down times where I don't think that at all, but right now I think that that's fantastic. What? Do you not think that's fantastic, Bailey? Yeah, I don't know how he feels about that. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Phil! 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 Oh my god, I miss you so much. I miss you so much, Phil. You know, I have to sit and answer the phone all day and people will be calling me and they're like, my life sucks because things are broken and I just miss um, having you there to be like, it's okay. I understand you. You're a weirdo. You know, mad props. And, and Phil, even though you like to play sports games, like, I support you. I support you in playing all the Madden things. You know, it's cool. I, I, I miss 
hanging out with you and I love seeing how happy your life is and your happy, happy pictures. I love to see the smiles. Phil asks, what is Susie Spector up to next? Oh my God, okay. So listen, I have been trying to like focus my YouTube channels. I have three channels and one of them I've kind of like gotten away from and that's really upset me because I haven't been able to dance. I have felt really inadequate for a long time. I have uh, lots of health problems that cause me daily bodily pain and I feel a lot of times, especially with um, being in groups with younger people, um, younger cosplayers, younger dancers, that I can't really keep up with them, but I'm trying really hard in my life right now to just be okay with who I is as a person. So, one of the things that I would like to share with you, because I have a lot of stuff coming up I can't share, that I will be doing is I'm going to take Devious Blonde, which was like my original channel, um, the one that I have that still exists, and I'm going to be doing more dances. And one of the reasons I'm going to be doing more dances is because I built a green screen. Just so you guys know, I built a green screen. I would have to say, all in all, with a light that I bought for it and some fabric I bought for it, it probably cost me like 30 or $40. But I opted to build my own um, based on the fact that I knew I could and the fact that when I buy on the internet, I never know what I'm getting. Uh, there's a lot of fabric out there and green screen fabric out there that's a certain height or size that is like kind of what I wanted but maybe 30 or 40 dollars you know 20 to 40 dollars is like the range of most green screen things without lights with diffusers and stuff like that so I said behold the power of YouTube and I went on YouTube and I figured out how to build my own green screen and I did so I'm hoping soon that you guys can see uh, all the things that I want to do uh, based on my green screen funness. I'm going to start using those for my Let's Play videos. I've already done a creepy little test. And with that being said, I'm hoping that I can dance in front of my green screen and I really want to bring out more dance stuff. Dance is like, that's, that's what I do. I'm a dancer. I dance things. And I'm hoping that dancing will help me express myself. Um, it's free for your own entertainment and it helps me share music that I like, which is really exciting. Music really inspires me. Um, it's something that I want to share with you guys. So, bringing out the dance stuff, got a new intro coming up, did all the filmings with the GoPro and some crazy stuff going on. I built a green screen. What? Okay. Anyway, Jennifer. Hi. Hi, Jennifer. I missed you guys. I missed you all. I did. I'm just doing the thing. So working. Working all the things. Jennifer asks, do you have any new dance related projects in the works? Hopefully you just heard that I do. I have dance related things. They're coming out. I'm really excited. Um, I've got like uh, I've got like three or four videos that are already filmed but I'm just, I don't know you guys. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm an artist and so I'm like at that point where I'm like, okay, like I like this, but it's not super clean. So I want it to be clean. I want to be happy with it. So yes, I have dance related things coming out. I'm actually thinking about publicizing um, free seminars for people based on my own personal opinions because we got to be opinionated up in the internet because we can't say this is how things are or otherwise, you know, we're going to get... Um, quartered, but drawn and quartered. And so I'm like, hey, you know what? I have seminars that I do. I don't get to do them all the time. Uh, the last like three seminars I did were completely free, so publicize them on the internet. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start doing uh, some of the things I do, dancey dance things on the intranets and the green screen and all the things. Stuff I said before. Stuff I said before. All right, moving on. Justin, one of my from the day job. Justin says, cool pictures. Do you use a specific lens or filter in your photos? Actually, yes and no. Yes, because first of all, y'all, I'm broke. I'm poor. I'm poor and behold the power of YouTube. YouTube, regardless of the fact that you don't have five million dollars to be spending on the internet, can make wonderful things. Everything nowadays is absolutely freaking like insanely built around artistic endeavors. 
I mean, get on Instagram for five seconds and you'll see, you know, at least 10 filters that are built for like, today I was feeling Valencia and therefore the lighting filter will be something you can use on your photos for free. That being said, the particular photo that I posted for this video was taken by Camera Tamara. She helped shoot my wedding. Like she uh, is one of the most creative and uh, amazing photographers I've ever met in my life. I love her personally as a friend and a human being. And she's one of the best mermaids I've ever met in the world. And uh, yeah, so just let that sink in for a little bit and uh, moving on. My best friend's a mermaid. What? All right, guys, Brian. Brian, you've protected me from the evils of this life. And I'm so sorry that you've had to see me at some horrible low points, but thank you for continuing to be my friend. Brian asks, if you had no restrictions on cost or materials or other resources, what would your dream cosplay be? And what would you like to make it out of? I have been thinking about this, like, to an irreparable extent. I, I literally have contemplated every vast scenario that there is about what I would do or or make or whatever and I came to the conclusion that um, the possibilities are endless they are endless for me I would love to do something as big as like making a, a loader from aliens you know making like the Ripley loader and I've I've contemplated um, making things as simple as you know, Ino from Naruto, like her, her outfit from Shippuden is not really, um, you know, it's not covered in, in styrene or vacuform. It's not something I would have to spend thousands of dollars making. That being said, I do have one project coming up that I can't talk about yet. I can't talk about it yet, but I have this amazing project coming up. It's one of the biggest things I've ever personally done in my life. There's a lot of collaborators involved in it, but, um, it has to be done piecemeal because I don't have the tools. And I'm telling you right now, every single time I contemplated this question, all I could think of in my life was, I wish that I had a 30-piece Dremel set. I wish that I had a belt sander. I wish that I had... Like, all the things I thought about didn't necessarily have to do with the costumes in general, but the fact that I am missing the tools. Like, I built a $90 gate for myself that I didn't actually pay $90 for because I didn't have that money, and I used the money that I had, which was nothing, and got a bunch of 2 by 4s and used the old hardware that was on the side of my house already, and I tried to build a fence. But I didn't have a... a you know, a carriage bolt size drill bit. And so, uh, like an Amish person, I used a rasp to like rasp out the hole. And I swear to God, you guys, if you have no freaking idea what I'm talking about, just imagine that you have to push a boulder up a hill. But you're not just pushing the boulder up the hill like most people do. You're pushing the boulder up the hill in the sleet uh, with no shoes on, on a bunch of gravel and mud up Mordor. Just think of that. But if anybody wants to, you know, donate like a 40 piece Dremel set, I ain't gonna be like, don't tell me I can't has this or whatever. Just give it, I don't care, whatever, it's fine. If you want to let me borrow it, I could really, I could use all the things. <laughs> all right, moving on. Rachel, you always be putting comments on stuff and I love you. The ADD artist, you guys, check it out on Facebook. ADD artist, uh, she is amazing. Uh, doing some tarot up in this bitch and doing uh, fantastic rune cards. I'm so excited. Her Instagram is just full of pictures of her new rune card set. She says, if you could costume, if you could do a costume inspired by a bird, what bird would you choose? And same question with a flower. Um, hawk or crow, for sure. I already have those ideas kind of sketched out, but I'm not going to show those pictures because I can't draw. And uh, we can talk about that, me and you, sometime. We can have dinner, you know, have a little dinner and talk about some of that. Uh, I would love to do a crow. And I am all about raptor birds, um, owls, uh, hawks, anything, eagles, anything that is super, you know, predatory bird I'm super excited about. 
And um, that being said, a flower, probably a tiger lily or an iris. I love irises. I love orchids and irises. Um, I do love roses, but all the roses I like are like weird hybrid ones that don't really occur in nature. And I don't know if I'd be able to be like, I like this blue rose that's on every anime ever and then do a cosplay for it. I don't know. Probably tiger lily. I probably have to say tiger lily. Next question. Francis? 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 Francis. Francis. I'm from the Midwest. We say Francis la. Uh, she asks, I love your lipstick in this photo. What kind is it? First of all, y'all, I absolutely invest in makeup. It happens. Girls do that. And uh, you're getting the, I've been working for uh, 16 hours and I look like, can you see the skin flicks? Can you see the skin flicks? Um, yeah, so I am not always looking my best and I'm trying real hard to just be accepting of that But I'm letting you know right now. I do invest in makeup that being said I don't always buy $90 lipstick. I just can't afford that kind of stuff. So I buy a lot of drugstore lipstick um, eye pencils, whatever some of that stuff works better for me than you know $80 urban decay eye primer that being said, it doesn't always have to do with the price. It doesn't always have to do with the brand. Sometimes it has to do with your own personal skin and how things, you know, work with it. I need some eyebrow pomade. Blue already told me, she's like, girl, you need some pomade because I got this thinning going on. I sweat like 30 dudes sweating on 50 dudes, whatever. So anyway, <laughs> uh, point being said, the lipstick I used for this photo is called Red Revival, and it's by Maybelline, 645. Is this how you do it? Is this how you do it? Am I doing a tutorial now? Tutorial? Makeup tutorial? Makeup tutorial. Look you guys, I'm Heavenly Leanne. I can't be, I need to blend. I need to blend, someone help, help me blend. Oh God. Uh, no, but seriously, uh, 645, Red Revival by Maybelline. I got this at like a drugstore. It wasn't like horribly expensive and I've used it forever. And it's like fluorescent red, but it has a nice undertone to it. So fantastic. Yeah, here we go. Okay, uh, Kane. Kane. He says, any particular idols or role models? Um, wow. Okay, so some serious times. You. You're one of my idols and role models. Each one of you, not only that has asked a question, but people that I have met in my life, you are my hope for the future. When I started doing this kind of stuff, I had no hope for the future. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know where I was going in life. Um, I was alone. I was scared. And I didn't have a sense of self. I often find myself being lost to an extent, trying to find myself. And I have a lot of uh, role models based on certain things in my life. Um, I'm sure I'll get a lot of hate for this, but I liked Michael Jackson quite a bit. I thought that he was very creative. I read a lot on his cases, you know, the things that happened to him and some of the things that were portrayed in the media, once you actually read into it, were a little bit more sensationalized and shady against him as they were, you know, for him. But in the end, something about watching that video um, for, like, bad. The video for bad, I watched that today just because I was thinking about this question and I was like, man, there's just something about a man, even within that time period, who is willing to don a leather jacket and, a, you know, an alternative fashion belt and have people doing, you know, the American splits in quad roller skates in knee high socks. That, I mean, that's a man. Like, 70s, like, male aesthetic and he's like you know what i can do the splits and roller skates with socks up to my knees can you handle that i don't think you can i don't think you can just something about that it was extremely creative and i love dancing i love dancing but each person that i meet individually there you have contributed so much to my life each one of you your art um 
you know, the, the experiences that you've had. You're all my idol. You're all my role model. I grew up in a very um, conservative state. I grew up in a place where um, having the dream of being the backup dancer for Cruciatos to me was a big deal because these were alternative women who had dreadlocks and silver makeup and they were wearing, you know, waffle stompers if you're old enough to remember what that term even means. You know, waffle stompers. Like, nowadays people like Lady Gaga, which fantastic. She's my same age. I'm really um, excited about how um, avant-garde she's made art. Uh, in the public eye, people like her didn't exist to the extent that they do now. Nowadays, it's almost like a circus, like a freak show, where you just absolutely have to be so out there that if you're not, you're not relevant. And there are so many people, um, even, even actors like Tim Curry. Oh my god, you guys, Tim Curry, still my favorite actor of all time. I don't give a fuck. He was darkness from Legend. That man could monologue with a plastic face and horns out to here in a way that would vibrate your inner core. Like, I, I, you know, when he had a stroke, I was actually so sad. I was so upset because I just, I've loved him. He was Nigel Thornberry from the Wild Thornberries. You know, he's the kind of guy that could be the butler from Clue and make you question whether or not you're able to keep up with life. Um, and be in Rocky Horror Picture Show and be, be Rocky Horror Picture Show. Tim Curry. I mean, just a, an amazing, multifaceted human being as far as being an actor. Um, but that being said, with all the famous people that exist, um, and not even to get into like religious and, and spiritual idols that I have, you... You who teach me how to survive in the wilderness um, when the end times may come or some kind of situation happen. You who support me as an individual uh, based on the fact that you still love me even though I'm a super weirdo. People, you know, like Tamara and uh, Vix and Rachel and Maddie and all the people that have existed in my life, Musum, that are willing to step up and say, you know what? You crazy. Susie, you look crazy, but I love you. Um, those kinds of people. Um, pe anybody watching this who, who could take the time to get this far into an episode, you are my idol. You are who I uh, consider to be my heroes. You are the people who gave me the strength to stop talking like this all the time very quietly and not look at anything. You gave me and helped me find my inner strength and you are my idol. And I love you. I love all of you. Um, and all my dogs. <laughs> I love all my dogs. I love my dogs so much. Even the crazy ones. Even, even my parents' crazy dogs. Even Bailey and Macy. Yeah. I love you. You're so silly. You're so silly. They're poodle and schnoodle. Poodle and schnoodle. If y'all were my schnauzer fans at, or my poodle fans at, you already know. But yeah, I mean, I really don't know any other way to answer that question other than you. You are my idol. <laughs> You're my hero. Um, anybody that's brave enough to go out there and put their art out there and attempt to positively change the world um, in any fashion, even if it's you held the door open for somebody, regardless of your gender or age. If you held the door open for somebody because you felt like it was a thing to do, you're my hero, you're my idol, and I love you. I really do. Moving on. Michael. Oh, Michael. Michael, I just want to let you know uh, that what I think happened to you t the other night in your kilt uh, was wrong. And um, gender issues aside, I, I support your strength in not being a weirdy. And uh, I love you. You're awesome. You have made me feel fearless and thank you for uh, being my bro. Thank you for being my bro. 
Michael says, so who or what was your inspiration for getting involved in alternative dance styles? Um, there's really only, I think, one good answer for this, and it's Sashi of Ascend Tribal Dance. And I didn't look up anything about her before I came because I feel like she, to an extent she's disappeared from social media, but indelibly. Um, one of the hardest times in my life, one of the most awkward times in my life, and one of my first conventions I ever went to was Dragon Con, which averages about 50,000 people a year. So it was culture shock. Um, I had friends that were like, you have this vinyl bikini that you bought and you should wear it. But at the time I was so uh, terrified about life that I couldn't do it. And um, back in the day, something that I learned in school and something I did as a project was to write a letter to someone who you may never actually send the letter to. It's almost like a diary or a journal type exercise, but instead you just write a letter. And um, in one of the worst, most, uh, like, to be, just to be honest, like, I, I hoped on this particular day that I could just lay down on this couch and starve to death eventually. Like, I, I literally did not have any hope for the future whatsoever. And I heard this song and saw this video by The Last Dance. And I know that based on my age and, you know, the fact that I wasn't like a die-hard, hardcore fan or even knew about the band before they reached this particular point in their career, um, that song allowed me, after one of the worst days in my life, to jump up and begin dancing alone in a room, creepily, probably. Um, but it, it changed my life. It was like a fulcrum point in my life, and I will remember it as such forever. And that day I wrote them a letter, um, and then fast forward to Dragon Con happening um, by the grace of a bunch of people that helped me get there. Uh, people like Jedi OKC, who were the first people that were like, hey, how would you feel about dressing up like a stormtrooper? How would I feel about that? I would do that all the times every day. It was one of the first times I ever cosplayed in public and I was able to go to Dragon Con with them. They're a wonderful children's charity organization and I got to go there and I found out two bands were going to be there when I got there. The Last Dance and The Crusados. And after hearing their music and being inspired, inspired by their message, I, I was so excited. I, w I literally was like, I will never get to meet them because they're going to be behind security and there's going to be like barriers. I really thought it was going to be like Aerosmith. And to me, you're both still Aerosmith. You really are. Like, you'll never not be <laughs> rock stars in my mind. And uh, when I found out that The Last Dance was going to be playing an acoustic set, like in this weird sort of foyer area that was at a hotel, I was like, how did they, how, how are they gonna like block people from like mobbing them, you know? And everybody was really cool and respectful and it was, it was crazy to me. I was like, holy crap. And then Sashi appeared. I have been dancing for 26-ish years, technically, I guess. And I had never considered belly dance in my life. I had always been inspired uh, by people like Jessica Lackey from Crushadas and some of the other various uh, women that have danced with Crushadas because they were like this indelible image of freedom to me. They were like this excessive, um, just explosion of freedom. They were like, this is what I wear, and this is what I do, and I'm dancing for a purpose, and I'm sexy when I do it, and I'm dark when I do it. Nyeh. It was so exciting to me as a little girl from Oklahoma who was, you know, used to country music, and thank God for the radio 101. 100.5 the cat thank god for you because jesus without metallica mondays we all would have died and it's like you know i go to dragon con and the last dance is there and by the grace of what i consider to be destiny i was able to give them this letter that i wrote them randomly one day when i was having like the worst day of my life and um to talk to them and to see them as human beings which was exciting um and to interact with them and then all of a sudden Sashi appeared. Sashi, she who 
can change the temperature of the room with her eyebrow. Swear to you on everything, I saw her perform once at Third Coast Tribal and she danced to this song and the lights went down and the blue filters just glowed around her and I could see my own breath. I am serious, I thought the place was haunted and I was like, this is the best day of my life. I was so excited. Um, Sashi, and I had no idea at the time, like if you watch her videos and you buy her DVD and all those things, she had um, uh, an ailment that caused her to be paralyzed from the waist down. And she found through dance, she was able to reteach herself how to move. There are a bunch of people, actually, um, some I won't min mention just based on the fact that they've never really publicized a lot of that stuff, who were either paralyzed or unable to move uh, due to illness or accident and they were able to learn how again to walk or to function through dance or performance art and that to me is amazing and I didn't know any of that and I saw Sashi and just she was so beautiful to me she was so beautiful it wasn't just that she had like dark makeup and that she had these leather wings and that she was just like this beautiful angel of gothic uh, tribal fusion but that she when she connected with you when her eyes were looking at you you could feel it in your body it wasn't necessarily sexual i mean she's pretty hot but like it you could feel it it was an emanating energy that penetrated me in a way that changed me forever. I was so taken by her, I was so excited. And then it was even better because at the time, even though later she danced to, uh, you know, other music, she was dancing with The Last Dance. And so it was like a culmination of all the things that really inspired me um, to get into belly dancing. And then later um, I saw what everybody considers like the goth kid YouTube dancing where they're doing all the punching and the, the sliding in. When I first got into it, there was this group called the Industrials and they were from Germany. And it, this was back in the MySpace days and I was like, holy crap, you guys look so awesome. They choreographed a lot of their movements. And I was like, what do you call this dancing? It's so beautiful to me. You guys are so, you know, amazing in your super cool cyberware and your gas masks and everything. And they called it Ruhr dancing. And I'm probably not saying that correctly, but um, what I found is that Ruhr or Ruhr in a bunch of, oh, my enunciation is bad. Uh, Wo klander schlacht denk mal. There, I can still say it. Um, Ruhr dancing is indicative of <laughs> an industrial area of Germany, which made me laugh so hard because I didn't know what it was for years. But the industrial kids, I was like, holy crap, and I saw them on YouTube, and I was like, you're so cool, and I want to be just like you, and, and what kind of dancing are you doing? And I used to do that. I used to go on YouTube, and I used to seek out super cool gothic -y stuff. Um, because where I grew up, and regardless of how you feel about this, I used to go to the mall, and when Hot Topic uh, came into my life, I was really excited. This was back when they did a lot more morbid threads and lip service and everything was super gothy not just during Halloween and I used to uh, the people there knew me by name because when you're you know a poor kid from the ghetto walking around the mall is something you can do for free and I used to go into Hot Topic even in my Catholic schoolgirl uniform which seems kind of ironic at this point and cliche and I used to go in there and be like I love everything that's in here I want to be this this is what I want I want to be part of gothic beauty magazine um, you know all of the mixed CDs I used to buy like um, Graver's Paradise you know that kind of stuff like changed my life and I have so many DJs nowadays are like me early 90s filler and me blah 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 you know what that inspired me that kind of stuff inspired me to be free individual to embrace who I was as a person and it was really exciting. I, I remember the first time I bought a full-length faux vinyl uh, fake Trinity coat from Red Ball Jackets and I was like, oh my god! I felt so hot. Like, I, I, that was just one of those times where I walked around like, like a boss. And it was so exciting. Um, I was 16. 16 years old. Very, like, malleable, um, impress impressionable age. Um, 
and and those kinds of things sort of shaped me as a human being and I never uh, grew out of it as they say um, I was never a person that was like this is how I am right now cuz I'm a teenager but then you know decided to you know as though being a person that likes industrial fashion is uh, young or retarded or something I don't know that's not true and you know, never will be. Um, but yeah, Sashi of Ascend Tribal Dance, um, she really is the first person that inspired me to, other than, you know, Jessica Lackey, to think outside the box. To think to myself, even though I get to go to dance class for free and I'm able to do Waltz of the Flowers from the Nutcracker. I swear to God, if you've ever seen Clockwork Orange, Waltz of the Flowers and Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairies is my song. If I was in Clockwork Orange, that would be my song where I murder everyone. Because I did the same thing over and over again. My dance studio was cool as hell because, like, when Buffy came out, they did Buffy for their recital. And that, you know, like, shocked and appalled a whole lot of the parents and stuff that were going there. And the lady, Cece Farha, that owned Range of Motion Studios, she's like, look, you know what? I'm creative. I'm an adult. This is an individualistic place. If you don't like it, go somewhere else. And then she went on to, you know, teach some of the most prestigious ballet companies in the United States. And she was a woman that in her late 40s, early 50s could do like the most insane leaps and arabesques and crazy leg stuff you've ever seen without stretching out because she was amazing and she had had kids and I was like, what the hell? I want to be you when I grow up. I want to be you. Um, but yeah, I, I, I would have to say that if it comes down to especially gothic industrial, tri like gothic tribal fusion, it would have to be Sashi from Ascend Tribal Dance. And I don't know where she's at. I don't know what's going on with her, but I love her and I love you. I love all of you. Um, that being said, wow. So thank you so much for all your questions. I hope I answered everything and I'm sorry this episode is probably going to be kind of long because there was a lot of questions and I was like oh my god there's actually questions and stuff. It was really exciting. I will be giving a couple of people who I, I haven't decided yet. I usually put them all in a hat because I want to be fair um, but I will be you know giving some people free music. Uh, free music if you've liked the music on this episode and uh, you have enjoyed listening to my ranting and all the other things. Um, you should check out Musum, Musum on Bandcamp. I'm going to leave a link down below. I believe I will be using Longing for this video. That's what I used in the last one, and I really, really like it. I like it a lot. Um, but he has an insane amount of good music that is extremely cheap on Bandcamp, and um, yeah. If you like the music nowadays, go ahead and go down to the link in the bar of under. You can stream it all for free so you can listen to it. And if you feel like you want to support him as an artist, go ahead and pay y'all seven dollars and stuff. Um, what else? Well, that's pretty much it. I think that's it. Um, I will be attempting very soon to bring out a new dance video. And I'm, I'm really sad about the side drive thing, so I'm not sure when I'm going to get from the archives out. But I have been working on two projects, one of which is going to be a new intro for my uh, channel. And I built a green screen, so um, all the things. All the things are going to happen. Um, yeah. Rate, comment, subscribe. Or not. Don't do that if you don't want to. Just uh, pay it forward. Be kind. Be loving. Um, accept people for who they are. Even if they're not what you like. You know, even if they have an opinion that's not popular. Even if they don't accept you for who you are as a human being. Be a better human being. And take what they have to say accept that it's not what you believe and let it pass through you because not everybody's going to agree with you not everybody is going to be um okay with how you live and who you are just make sure that it doesn't um, resort to violence that's that's all you can really ask and for humanity i love everyone i love all of you you're all my heroes you're all my idols you're you're all the people i look up to and um, if you have a question 
for next week's episode or if you just need to say something, I'm here. Message me. You don't have to say it publicly. Um, if you if you have something you need to share, send it to me. I'm there. I'll be there for you. Um, yes, that is all. That is all. Stuff and things. Do, 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 do. Subscribe. <laughs> Subscribe. Subscribe. Bye, Felicia's. <laughs> do, 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 subscribe.